Hi folks, we are back again, and I've now got the got this glaze uh, slaked down. We are literally only, just so you understand, five minutes are on from the termination of the last clip, as you saw me. Okay, I've added water to this. Now it's important that when you add the water, you don't add too much water to start with. Otherwise you're just going to get your glaze so watery that you're not going to be able to um, use it. Now what am I looking for? I'm looking for that. Looking for one of these, one of these guys. So, right now I'm going to test out Eddie's crazy invention. Hi Eddie. <laughs> so, how are we going to do this? Um, maybe I should move this bucket. Put that on there. Put that there. Like that. And then. So this, the way that he's made this, is you see that these bolts here that stick out the side. So that it, you see, it rests in the bucket like that. All right, so gonna need another jug, another pouring jug, that one. So what we're gonna do is transfer this, it's in here. So give this a good stir up as best you, as best you can in the, um, mixing bucket right now what we're going to do is I'm going to get this whoa I'm going to pour there. Now I'm going to use my rubber-ended spatula thingy just to clean out So you see, you see how that is clean like that. So what you're going to do now, take your jug of water, put that in, in there. All right. Keep that there. All right. Now let's just take the camera off the tripod here a minute. Let's get over here to where the action is. Hi, Eddie. Look at this, Eddie's crazy contraption. Well, maybe it ain't so crazy. So now I'm turning this. I really need two hands to, to hold it. So I'm gonna to have to put the, the camera back on the tripod. I'm afraid, okay, like that. Just. Some of the some of the residue is got caught on these bars. Let me get off. Okay, give it. A... So you see, this is this is quite effective. Let me see if I can demonstrate. You see how it's it's pushing through there. I uh, won't hold it up there for too long because Eddie's pottery, he's from Illinois and yeah he arrived here one day with this 
Now I'm going to add a little bit of that water. You see, might have to add a touch more. Just to just trying to. Okay, So there you have it. This is the first time I've used this. Um, I'm giving you my... Now I've got another glaze I need to make up. Now if you want, if you, for example, if you want to make up a glaze that has a lot of red iron oxide in it, which I do, I need to make up a, a, a Temaku glaze. Um, you would always want to do that the very last glaze of all so that then you can thor thoroughly wash it at the end. Of course, as with all apparatus, apparatuses like this, which are designed to aid and assist your, uh, your work, and you can see clearly this works very well, um, but the downside is, of course, you've then got to do, you've got to do a clean up of this. This has all got to be scrubbed and clean, etc. So you just need to weigh that up. If you, were, if you were mixing up quite a lot of glaze on a regular basis, batches of glaze, something like this would be quite useful. If you're just doing it every once in a while, well, you'd have to weigh up whether it, you'd want to go to that extent of mechanization. But yeah, it works pretty good, uh, Eddie. So just give it a, give it a, get all the and the best thing to do with that right now is take it over here to the to the sink area and you know get some water always it's always a good idea to clean off stuff like this immediately you've used it rather than letting it dry out you see because once it's dried out it, it's harder to it's harder to clean. All right, so well, that works quite well. I put it inside that bucket down there, underneath, and that's gonna that's gonna help it clean off pretty easily. All right. Well, I'll come back to that. Okay. So now this glaze. Now what I should do is get my, um, my my caterer's whisk, my caterer's whisk, and I think the uh, Eddie's screen is um, eighty. Yes, 80 mesh, in case anybody wants to know. Well, of course, you could make up a screen there to any, any... any size in terms of, you know, 80 mesh, 100 mesh. Now, good, so this at the moment is looking, it's looking a little, just a touch on the thick side for application. All right, this is how I test it, just, just by doing this. I can just tell by, by looking at it through years of experience that whether it's the right thickness or not for my use. All right, so what I'll do now is I've got some left over here in this bucket. So what I'll do is, yeah, I was doing a bit of glazing yesterday here, some raw glazing of those tankards and all these bud vases. 
give this a stir around. Yes, if you're interested in coming on a workshop, give us a shout. I don't know, with the coronavirus, maybe we ought to have to come up, whoops, making messes around here, aren't they? Come up with some, some web teaching, some online, well I do, I do do that, in any case for people, if people want, you know, video, web, webcam type teaching, if anybody's interested in webcam teaching, you know, I mean it's basically, it's one-on-one -on -one teaching. I could probably offer that for people, I'd probably, if I was going to do it, I'd probably lower my rate a little bit, and probably set it at a, at a rate that is somewhat lower than what it usually is, I usually, I usually, usually do it for about 65 an hour, but I could probably do it for, for 48 or something an hour. There's going to be a lot of people now out there who want to go to workshops, but 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 are frightened to go, and, and as as a way of keeping up your teaching. Okay, so let's add that back into there. Okay, give him a, a, a give him a give him a wipe out with this. Hang on, let's put this camera in here a second. Yeah, and as I said in the previous video, if anybody's interested, I will have one or two uh, leech treadle wheels available. If that's something, um, if that's something that grabs you, give me a shout. Okay, and check out my workshops on the on the um, on the website. The dates. Other than that, thank you for joining me. I hope this little lesson here, how to mix up a glaze, it's not really any different than mixing up a recipe if you're cooking in the kitchen. So don't be frightened. Go and buy the raw materials that you need. They're ever so cheap if you buy them. You see like here, like this, um, um, this is a 50 pound bag of um, silica, flint, all right. If you buy it like that, you're buying. You're just going to have several bags of of silica, of whiting, of of felspar, of EPK, kaolin, whatever it is you need. All right, and you're going to mix up your glazes yourself, and you're going to save yourself. I'm no kidding, hundreds of dollars if you do it like that. And it's not difficult, as you've seen me do it, you could just do that yourself, couldn't you? It's no great, no great rocket science there. Just keep track of what you're putting in, tick it off, as I told you, on the list. Don't get confused, did I put that in or didn't I? The phone rang, you know, somebody came, the door knock, you got in a conversation, then you come back and you think, oh my goodness, did I put that in or didn't I? That's why it's so important. As it goes into the bucket, you tick it at that very moment. Okay, folks, that's it. Keep practicing. See you around town. Bye for now.